Okay, so um, here I am with the hood up on this piece of garbage. <laughs> so I went through and I flushed out the coolant system and I put a new coolant reservoir tank on it. So now it's nice and clean. Everything's all well and good. And now the car's overheating. And from what I can tell, the coolant fan, the cooling fans are not coming on. So, a um, couple things. I talked to some buddies, and they said, "Well, it's uh, I, I know my water pump works because when I undid this hose and started flushing it, there was definitely water being pumped out of here. So, the water pump works for sure." <clears throat> so, this is a 2004 Cadillac DeVille, but this is what they call the professional chassis so i'm not sure if the standard deville has the exact same layout but anyway over here are some relays and as i started to look at this it says number 37 39 and 40 which is here here and here or um here here and here these three relays are for Cooling fans, cooling fan one, uh, cooling fan two, and what's labeled as cooling fan SP. I'm not sure what that means, but there is a fan here. I believe this one works. That's I think that's just for the AC. And then your fans are, whoops, your fans are back here, right? Now, in a lot of these cars, the relays would be located basically down in this area, down at the very, very bottom where the, uh, where like there's like a pan at the bottom there. And that's what some of them have, uh, that, that's where some of them have these relays. But apparently on this model, fortunately for me, um, the relays for the cooling system are here. Now, I do not see anything labeled as a fuse for the cooling system. I only see relays. And I looked in the trunk and I didn't see any of the fuses. And I know that this is where the ECU is and there's no um, there's no fuses there. So my next step is, um, so here's, here's my reasoning, right? Cool, I've got two fans that are not working and I've got three solenoids for fans right there. So I figure if one solenoid goes out, then the other solenoid is still good. And so the other fan should work. So it would be very odd to have all three of these solenoids go out all at once. That just seems very improbable to me. So I'm thinking it's the coolant temperature sensor, which I believe on this car, if you look where your brake... Uh, brake booster master cylinder is you're going to go under there and basically there's this um, well I'm not sure what this is called I, I don't know if this is like an EGR type thing I think it's some sort of EGR device but directly underneath there um, and I know you really are not going to be able to see it from this camera angle but if you follow where this uh, screwdriver is, you're basically looking at something that is located. Uh, let's see if I can. It's basically down here, okay? It's basically buried way, way, way under here. So if you can follow where this screwdriver is pointing, it's going to be on the back. Uh, kind of lower part of the engine head facing the firewall. So that means I got to dig out a lot of stuff to get to this. So I'm starting here. Hopefully I don't have to remove this entire box like I did last time, but maybe I will. I'm going to start removing this stuff here and hopefully I can get to it to uh, take out that coolant temperature sensor. And with any luck, hopefully that's the only problem that's not causing the fans to switch on. But we shall see. Okay, picking up where I left off. Okay, so I have removed 
this top cover piece. I got the ECU out of the way, and I'm starting to dig in where we've got this absolute fucking mess of hoses. This, this is where I start complaining about General Motors design, because this is like all an afterthought how it was put in here. So, I'm trying to get there, basically behind this wiring harness. So, it's one of those things where, you know, you're already here, and I see corrosion going on here. Um, these are not factory, so someone's already been in here to mess with this stuff. And uh, this... Let's see, this is the tube here. This one was clogged. This is the one that had the little valve in it that was all clogged up. So I'm going to remove all of this, see if I can't find any other clogs. And it should give me a little more working room because I got to get in kind of at an angle this way. And so this is totally in my way. But I figure, hey, I'm already here. Take all this stuff out. Replace all these little sections of hose. Replace these corroded out clamps. And that way you pretty much never have to deal with it again. Okay, so first casualty already. Um, this piece broke. Now, there's a whole bunch of hose clamps in there. I have a feeling this is not a factory part. Whatever this plastic connecting piece is, um, I just don't think it's a factory part, so. We shall see. That's one That's one piece to replace. So that was basically coming from this water pump through this black tube back here into this fitting where it seems to be going in all different directions. Um, boy, that's a really tight squeeze in there. I'm wondering if I can just kind of like divert some of this stuff to where I don't have to deal with it anymore. Okay, so I've taken out this monstrosity and now I have uncovered yet another monstrosity. So here's the broken piece. This was kind of underneath this one and this one was connected here. So this like Y-shaped fitting, which I also doubt is factory, was in there. But then again, you know, these conversion cars, these limo conversions, they do have goofy stuff. So, uh, you know, it's hard to tell what was connected to what and why. Anyway, I am making some progress here. And I am slowly making my way to this piece in here. I know you can't see it, but basically where this screwdriver is pointing that's kind of where i'm going with this i gotta reach in there some way somehow but like everything else uh you know you're already here you might as well clean up these hoses um clean stuff out and just see if there's any kind of hidden damage lurking all right well i think that's going to be the end of part one for now